Welcome to Woodforge UK. In this video we're going to be looking at some coppicing. Okay, so we've got some hazel here, which we're going to be coppicing. Now this is classic example um, of what we call overstood hazel or neglected hazel. Um, so it's hazel that's not been coppiced for a very long time. You can see it's got multiple stems. So there's quite a few going to work on, about five or six stools, copper stools are going to work on today. You can see when they have this much growth on them there's quite a lot of weight in the stump. And what can happen is uh, the roots don't uh, can support the weight of the tree so you can actually lose the whole tree because it can uh, fall over in uh, high winds and storms. Um, so by coppicing we're actually uh, restoring the vigour to the tree and what this is going to do is it's going to stimulate the root growth under the ground and then later in May, June um, we'll see all this uh, vigorous uh, new shoots and growth uh, grow up from around the base of where we uh, did the final cut and uh, we'll be coming back in uh, the summertime just to have a look how these are recovering. So as you can see I'm in the chainsaw togs so let's get cutting. So today I'm using my trusty MS261C, it's a good forestry chainsaw. The timber we're cutting today we're going to be using in a variety of ways which we'll have a look at later. So that one had quite a few uh, tangles in the upper branches I just had to cut out first before lowering it. But you can see here this part is actually dead, this part was starting to die off on the stump. Whereas you've got living wood here, all that's alive and all that's alive there. So what will happen now is we'll get all new shoots all along these outer parts. Okay, now I've got the fiddly bit of uh, cross-cutting and uh, sorting this into poles and brush.
Okay, we're just gonna have a look at the next stump. I'll just show you something here. So you can see on this stump the hazel's already been trying to regrow with these shoots. But as you can see, the wall being a telltale sign, we've got uh, sheep in this area. So you can see all these have been damaged. So this is another um, critical thing I will do uh, later on, is I need to fence this off from uh, any livestock. Um, rabbits and deer can also be a big problem for regrowing coppice. Um, there's a lot of information from uh, countryside organisations like Natural England and the Forestry Commission um, on sort of ways you can keep out um, animals like that damaging but also uh, deer management options. So coppicing is always about cutting as low to the ground as possible to get the regrowth whereas the opposite pollarding, we just have a quick look at this here see this has been done before and again you can see some buds of regrowth where the tree's trying to regrow. So pollarding's done above the uh, the grazing or browsing line that the animals can reach. Um, often you see it done on uh, willow trees by uh, riversides as well. And also it's uh, it works quite effective on uh, small leaf lime trees. If you can make that out, we've got a, a flower on this one. <laughs> Yeah, very tiny flower of the hazel tree. So on this next stump it will be interesting because the these are actually two separate stems and they're probably attached right down at the base here. So I can't just put the, uh, the beak in here and then the back cut because this doesn't have a, a beak so I could lose control. It doesn't matter too much on this tree because it's quite a small tree compared to uh, when you get up to uh, bigger stuff then it really counts getting accurate cuts and uh, knowing sort of the weight and working out how how and where the tree is going to fall down um, but in this situation I'm going to take off this front one first a bit higher and then I'll probably do the second one then quite high and then I'll do my final cut nice and low to the ground I'm processing the hazel. All these uh, big, the thickest parts, which has been uh, very, very overstood for many years, probably plus 15, 20 years or something like that. Um, there isn't really a use for that, so I'll either turn that to charcoal or into firewood. Um, got a nice straight pole here. So use that as a temporary fence post or something. 
Hazel's not too bad to be used in the ground. It can probably last about three years or so. Um, obviously it won't last to something uh, treated or even an oak post would be much better. Looking further up the tree, we've got some more poles. I could probably cut those into beam poles, that kind of thing. Uh, there isn't really anything straight enough for uh, making hurdles or using this um, binders for hedge laying uh, because it's um, been overstood coppice again by getting the hazel back into like a coppice cycle um, you get a much more higher quality product which has a lot more uses when you get that uh, young lush growth of the hazel which grows into nice straight rods also got a pea stick in here I'll cut this one out I've got some more pea sticks I've cut from another piece set. These are ideal for growing runner beans up in or peas in the, in the vegetable garden but also you can use them in borders, support flowers against uh, the wind and heavy rain. So in an ideal world you have something a bit like that so it's kind of like a flat, flat fan like a herringbone kind of shape and it just acts like a ladder to support the plants. Okay, so as I'm working, I'm gradually processing the wood. I'm just going to show you how you use a bill hook to do what we call snedding. So snedding is just taking off the uh, the side branches, off the stems. So I wedge it against my body. And I'm always cutting away from myself. So, certainly not the straightest, but that would do for a beam pole or even a rough stake or something. I could use that if I was hedge laying. So, you can see trees growing this way. If you cut down this way into the, the grain, it usually splits and it takes a couple of cuts. So, if we go up the tree, you can take it off in one hit like so. So here this would be the firewood and charcoal pile. Got the uh, general brash pile. I'll probably burn that up at some point or we'll make a habitat pile or something. So these are the straightest rods I was able to find. Use of stakes and beam poles, that kind of thing. Fairly straight rods and again a bit bigger size so these we use for fence posts and then the better quality brush for the pea sticks so it's always important to tidy and process the coppice as you go along one it's not like a mammoth task of tidying up at the end of the day and two it just keeps uh, your work area safe because you don't want to be tripping up 
or falling over at the best of times and certainly not when you've got chainsaws and sharp tools. <laughs> so look at this one here. This has actually had it, sadly. This one's finished. Let's see where the animals have been pecking at all the dead bark. Lots of woodworm holes. So this just shows uh, when the hazel does get overstuff for too long, it will deteriorate. So that said, looking on uh, this stump here, we can see when the decay's already started in the uh, the centre of the heartwood. And again, here on this one. So the centre's beginning to rot out. The sapwood's still living, but eventually that would die out, and then that's when the, uh, the whole tree usually topples over. Okay, there's never such a thing as a straightforward tree to uh, fell. Each are uh, unique, and this is what you have to assess before you come to fell them. So in this instance here, with this big one, we've got a lot of weight here at the back, and it's also leaning back into uh, the forest here, and I don't want it to land and smash the, the fence. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to use the pole saw to take off some of these branches, which are hanging back into the field take those off, lessen the weight and then uh, I could probably pull it over then because uh, we're felling it against the way um, it's leaning. Let's do it. <coughs> within a couple of inches of the bottom cut.
Okay, so I took off the, uh, the branches on the top of this one that's leaning out. So it's pretty much like a pillar now, or like a monolith. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the normal cuts from the front. And then what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to pull it over with the pole saw. I wouldn't normally do this um, pulling a tree towards you. Um, but in this situation, we, we've got no other choice. Wish I had a winch. So we're cross-cutting this log. I'm going to show two ways of cross-cutting. So this first one, you can see the log is supported in one place, so it's sticking up in the air. So for this one we do an undercut first and then the top cut. So this is the tension and compression cuts. Um, we do this because we could just go straight through from the top but sometimes the timber can split underneath. Um, this is also the same thing how you do a drop cut uh, when you're pruning a branch off a tree. So again, the branch up in the air, it's supported at one place because it's joined to the tree and it's free in the air. So you do an undercut first, then the top cut. So this time cross-cutting again, the branch, it's in an arc, so it's actually supported at two places, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So this time we cut through from the top first, then we do the undercut. So again, this is tension and compression, and this helps stop the saw get pinched. Uh, this principle will also work with uh, manual saws as well, it's not just chainsaws.
Okay, last one to do today. So I'm gonna try and get this down on the deck really quickly. last two trunks um, are leaning towards the woodland um, so to stop them uh, damaging the fence I've um, got the tractor out and uh, we've roped it as you can see and we're going to pull it into the, the field when I do the main cuts. <laughs> Okay, so that's me done for today. I'm going to come back and tidy up next week. So we'll glance back and have a look at the trail of destruction I have left in my wake. Not really, it's all pretty creative. So it stimulates the trees to regrow and all this material we're going to find a use for, use as much of it as we can and then uh, turn the rest to firewood and charcoal and such.